Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This will be the first video where I go through each of my IB subject IAs and reflect upon it and talk about why I might have gotten this mark and what you guys can learn from it. I know most people are looking for a level 7 IA and wanting to hear advice for um, those people who got a level 7 on their IAs. I just want to clarify that for my chemistry IA, I got an 18 out of 24, so it is a level 6, but I have multiple reasons as to why I think I got this grade and I think this is something that you guys might be able to learn from and just avoid the mistakes that I made and hopefully that will help you score better on your IA. My predicted was a 20 out of 24 which is a low 7. So overall it's not a bad IA but it could be approved upon a lot in order to achieve the highest mark possible. And just to clarify, I am not an IB examiner. I do not represent anything from the IB. These are just my personal opinions as to why I got these grades, but all the things I said will be backed up by IB resources like subject reports and teacher support material. So you guys can see that there is actually a legit reasoning behind why I think I got this grade and it's not just my subjective opinion. So yeah, let's get right into the video. So here I have my chemistry IA in front of me and this is the final draft that I submitted to the IB. So a couple of things before we start. First, don't use the cover page. You don't need it. It's a waste of space because it is not required by the IB unlike the math IA which they said they specifically want a cover page. Also, for the chemistry and all the science IAs, they don't have any requirements on the font and the size of the text. So with that said, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of manipulating those in order to save you space if you're a person like me who writes way too much. So what I did here, as you can see, the margins are super tiny. I guess it's okay the worst thing is you got some marks taken off in the communication section and so my font times new roman i think mine was a font 10 and as you can see i have section titles here are the general structure you should have for your chemistry ia i'll put it on the screen so here you need a title my teacher said don't do a cover page but do have a title i did think it was necessary but he told me to have it so i guess there's no harm it, it just takes out a few lines the first thing you should always have is your research question this should be the first thing your teacher is looking for and so as you can see my research question was fairly vague if you look at some other people's research questions like my biology research question it's very specific in that I listed out all the independent variables and listed out all the dependent variables but my chemistry teacher advised me to not do so he wants me to write a vague research question and then elaborate them in another section I have all my independent and dependent variables and all the basically important stuff so I'll highlight them here uncertainties make sure you include them here I also included how I manipulated it so manipulate it using a water bath and then I have a brief summary of my methodology and then so here as you can see in my topic what I want to find is the level of ascorbic acid content in fresh tomatoes but technically my dependent variable is not that my dependent variable is the volume of titrant added for the solution to have a permanent color change so my teacher said it's important for you to clarify that in this section as well like how you will manipulate and process the dependent variable in order to get you the answer you want the values will be averaged and used to calculate the ascorbic content so even though i said my research question is quite vague keep in mind that i still didn't use those very vague terms that needs to be defined in my research question some examples of that as shown in the ib subject report guide is the word suitable or effective or something like amount because there's so many ways to understand that like what what do you mean by suitable? In what context? And this is not something you can determine just by looking at the research question. So definitely don't include them because it is reported by the IB that this form of research question in general is weaker. Yeah, so let's move on to the next section. So, as you can see here, I wrote something about Chinese culture. This is something I saw a lot and a lot of teachers say is that don't include a personal engagement section. Like, it is a criteria in that it takes up, I don't know, 
two marks, but that's like, I don't know, less than 10% of your overall IA. So I don't think it's really necessary and it just takes up too much space, like considering like there's other things you want to include. So even here with like this one paragraph, I think it's too much. I even cringe when I look at this. Oh, and in terms of my topic, the topic that I did, which is uh, measuring the level of vitamin C content, it's a very, very cliche topic. It's a very easy and overly done chemistry IA. So I knew that the examiners were going to roll their eyes when I see my topic. So I already tried to spice it up a bit by doing an IV DV thing and then have like the effect of heating temperature as the independent variable due to the nature of my choice of topic like temperature and vitamin C content because this topic is quite commonly done it really fits their negative comment criteria here where it says like this research qu question is quite superficial and simple and would have led to an outcome that would have been self-evident from the outset so that could be one of the major reasons why I lost that mark simply because my choice of topic if you can don't do this topic Topic. I did this because I ran out of time and I just didn't have the energy to think about a creative new IA topic so I just went with this like very boring and cliche one that's probably one of the reason why I didn't get the best grade like a level 7 IA I would definitely suggest doing a titration topic because titration is good in that you get very good quantitative results and you can include qualitative results as well and in terms of choosing topic, there are generally two types of chemistry IA topics that you can choose. The first type is the one I did where I manipulated the independent variable and then I see a change in the dependent variable. The second type is you determine the level of content in something. So for example, if I have just have an orange shirt, I, my entire IA can be revolved around, oh, how much vitamin C are there in this orange? Or for example, I have a pack of potato chips and then in the label it says how many calories it is and I can use the calorimeter to determine how much calories are there actually in this like pack of potatoes and compare it to the theoretical value given on the package and generally even though my teacher said both are fine, I saw from the IB subject reports, they said that it's much more better if you do that. The first type, which is you measure the independent variable and then you see a change in the dependent variable. Because according to them, you can do a lot more data analysis as well in terms of like how you graph the data and then how you analyze the patterns and then reflect upon it and evaluate your methodology as a whole and do data analysis. Whereas the second type where you just determine something the only thing you can do is to calculate the percent uncertainty and then compare it to the theoretical value you cannot really show as much knowledge in terms of doing data analysis so yeah so here's the background section this is a bit unnecessary and then for this one this one it's good in that it ties into a syllabus i think it's option b biochemistry I often like to tie things in with the syllabus because you are expected to use what you learn from the syllabus to apply it and do an external assessment. And then yeah, remember to do your in-text citations. I have this sentence like, in this study, the ASC content of fresh tomatoes at different temperatures will be investigated, which is almost like, I don't know, a thesis maybe? Um, it's not really necessary as well. And try to use abbreviations because my sentences are very wordy, like as you can see from the way I talk. So I try to use a lot of abbreviations which is not a problem just make sure you clarify that at the beginning so now in the second part of my background section i'm going into the more chemistry ish kind of thing i'm pretty proud of my background section in that because a lot of people have done this topic i want to take it to a further level in that i want to, to tie more hl content and stuff like that and because technically ascorbic acid is organic chemistry so if you are able to tie it to that it's like actually very good that because you're connecting all the topics together and i feel like this is what ib examiners want to see if you've seen other vitamin c content ias i feel like mine is already like more complicated and complex in that i include a hl topic in it if you happen to be doing like the iodine titration like i did i think what i included here the equilibrium reaction and like the kc value is very good because I'm basically trying to explain the background of how the titration works. To be honest, now that I look at this, because I'm more of explaining how like the titration works, maybe that's not that relevant to my research question as a whole. So this could be a problem in that I was I might be sidetracked. But my teacher said it was okay, but like eventually I don't know where my marks were deducted. So if you guys have a very good teacher, I feel like this is something you can ask them and then 
see what their opinion of this is. And the next paragraph, I'm explaining the entire thing. Here I'm explaining redox, which you definitely need. If you're doing titration, always include the reaction equation because this will be the basis of your calculation later on. So I have to include it here so that later on when you actually go into a data processing part, it's not like that reaction equation just suddenly just jumped out of the blue. You have to include it at the beginning so the examiner knows like the overall big picture of what you're doing. Okay, so the next thing is the hypothesis. Hypothesis is something that's like questionable in that it is not required by the IB, but a lot of teachers still want their students to do it. I don't know what the exact reason is. Yeah, for all of my IAs, for my biology IA as well, which scored much higher, both of them I included the hypothesis, so I'm assuming it's okay if you do so. Here I have a graph to show what I'm predicting. And just make sure when you do your hypothesis, don't something like, oh, it's predicted that there will be a negative correlation between A and B. The word negative correlation doesn't mean anything. There's so many types of negative correlation. There's inversely proportional, like directly por proportional in the negative two way. Just by saying negative correlation is not enough. You really need to be almost as specific as possible using your scientific knowledge. And then just explain explain my reasoning, like how I got to that prediction. And so here to further elaborate on what I meant by the like sensitivity of that to temperature, I even included a rate law, which is again, HL topic. I think my overall like hypothesis section was pretty well written. I did ask a lot of my friends to read over them because I was kind of scared in that I was also dealing with the um, Arrhenius equation, which is like really complicated as well. So I think my reasoning is fairly well and everyone that I showed to like even my chemistry teacher understood my reasoning using my example you can see how in depth I went in with my reasoning to explain why I made that prediction and I think this is the level that IB wants so next I have my variables and within variables it is separated into independent dependent and control variables and you need all three for sure the independent variable here I have like a tiny small topic sentence where I explain what my dependent variable is is. And most of the time when you measure independent variable, you need to list it out. And this includes like the uncertainty because if you're manipulating your IV, there is definitely a degree of uncertainty and you have to measure your independent variable. I feel like this is something that people often forget because you're still manipulating it. There's still a degree of uncertainty and especially with something like temperature, um, you really do have to measure it every time you try to manipulate it. What you need to include under the explanation for independent variables is why does it affect the dependent variable? How are you going to manipulate it and how are you going to to measure your independent variable. And so the dependent variable here, as you can see, the dependent variable that I wrote is the raw dependent variable, which is like the actual thing that I'm going to measure. And as I said, the final answer I want to obtain is like, how does it affect the vitamin C content? But I will only get that from my measured raw dependent variable, which is the amount of titrant. Like also don't say amount, don't say the word amount. That's because the word amount is just so, so vague. Like there's so many types of amount. There's like um, volume, there's like mass. Just saying the word amount is just, it doesn't mean anything. Here, my control variables, I do encourage you to include it in a table format because then it's super structured. You make sure you have like all these three things. Organize your control variables by priority. So the most important control variables come first on the top and the least important one goes on the bottom. This is not a rule. It's but it makes sense to do so. And this is what my bio teacher told me to do. I'm not going to talk about all these. Something you need to know is also to note the obvious because like the concentration of iodine titrant, obviously you need to have that to be consistent in order to like actually calculate those stuff. But because it's already so automatically programmed into our brain, like if you do a lot of titration questions, you will forget about it. Actually, time of heating should go first. For control variables, I saw online from other IA videos that I think you need at least seven or eight to be able to get a good mark. And in terms of control variables, I saw a subject report. IB does care about like your control variables in that if you don't control like the most obvious things, your marks will be deducted because it will seem like you are deliberately trying to make this lab bad in order to have a lot of evaluation improvement section to write. This is not what they want. They want in-depth thinking, high level thinking. For control variables, what I did, which I found helpful was that I looked a lot of other papers or similar 
similar papers that was similar to mine or even other IAs or similar IAs because as I said my topic is overly done and so I learn from other people's mistakes like if I saw this is one thing that they wrote in their evaluation section improvement section take that into consideration and incorporate that into your IA as well. I'm sure you still have other stuff to write. You will never run out of things to write. So the next thing I have is equipment and materials. It is not necessary to separate the two of them, but I've done this for a while, so I'm just used to doing it this way. You do need unit and quantity, but you don't need to do it in the table format like I did. I know some people just do like two columns and they just put in bullet points. That's fine as well. I think that actually saves you some more space. I saw online that like some students, they also include the brand name of certain equipment or materials because the things I use are pretty general it's not like I use a specific strain of bacteria like I did in my biology I ate it's fine if you don't include the brand name if you're doing titration like me when you're preparing for a solution make sure you include the the concentration of the solutes that you used so the next section is safety environmental and ethical consideration for this section I think it's best if you put it before the methodology section because it just makes sense to get a heads up on the environmental and safety consideration before you actually do your IA. Here, I feel like for safety stuff, it is again important to note the obvious. Gloves, goggles, lab coats were worn at all times. Even stuff like all glassware were handled with care. If you're doing stuff with temperature, being able to monitor like the temperature and be aware of like safety consideration is very important as well. <coughs> Here I have the procedure. I have small sections. If you just have like a huge list of procedural stuff you want to do, um, it's very hard to read. So I try to put it in sections so that it's easier to read. Be sure to cite your procedure. I asked my teacher this question. He just told me to include a sentence like this so that you don't need to explain that later on again. Here. I explained that I use a graduated cylinder and not a volumetric flask. That's a procedural problem in that they can deduct marks from like my procedural section because I didn't use the most accurate measuring device, which is the volumetric flask. Using the right equipment is so important. You just need to follow as much as what IB wants. So for example, here, I wrote about the proper procedure of making a solution. It is actually one of the prescribed labs in IB chemistry that I has already taught you so do include that in your IA because that's definitely what they want they want to see you to use what you have learned in class into your internal assessment into like your individual projects I don't know how much mark they'll take off but I'm sure they won't want you to use a beaker which is the least accurate measuring device in science so it's just small things like that that I'm very careful about that I think did help me to score an overall pretty good grade and yeah apparatus setup I wrote it in like word because I I probably didn't have the space to put down a diagram for apparatus setup the best thing you can do is just put up a label diagram that you created on your own for stuff like which is like a standardized apparatus already there really is a need for you to go in the in-depth description about it because anyone with chemistry background knowledge would know what a titration is. Yeah, I just had like one or two or three sentences to just cover like what my apparatus is. Here I included steps of me measuring the independent variable because you need to know that even though the water bath is set at 30 degrees, that doesn't mean the solution is set at 30 degrees. So that is something you need to take in consideration of. In my procedure, I also included stuff about modification of procedures. This is something I found out after some trial and error. If you did some pilot testing, a lot of teachers say do include that in your IA as well, but I just didn't have the space to do so, so that's why I didn't include any of my pilot testing for my bio and chemistry IA. I asked my teacher if I should include this, and he said yes, because he said this really shows the high level thinking that you have for IB chemistry students, and I was like, okay. This is something I feel like IB wants is that they want you to spend some time designing your experiment and not just copy and paste one thing you found on the internet and then just follow other people's procedures. So I'm going to cut it off here for my IB chemistry I video. This video is already long enough so I don't want to make it any longer so I'll make a part two a separate video for it so you guys can see. So yeah stay tuned for the second part of this video and I hope you guys found it helpful.